this is our first episode in the village. It's actually kind of fun. It's fair week, yeah. sunshine, um, Freeburn County Fair. I think it's the award for best fair week weather, weather. ever. Yeah. Oh gosh, wood. yeah, this is wood. That's good. Yep, not gonna yeah. work. Um, I'm Stephanie Kibler, executive director here at the museum with Risha Lilienthal, exhibits and collections coordinator. Yeah. Uh, like I just said, it's fair week, woo! Um, and all week we've been all about the fair. We did our popcorn history. On fair food. <laughs> that was yummy. I went home sick. It was a lot of fair food. It was a lot of fried. Mm -hmm. So today our focus is cotton candy. Uh, and we're gonna introduce you to the cotton candy martini. Yeah. I'm skeptical on this one. See, I really like sweet drinks, so I, I might really like this. I don't, and it scares me. But I do like cotton candy. I do mm -hmm. like cranberry juice. Mm -hmm. I do like Grey Goose. So, and I like a vodka cranberry. So that's kind of what this is with cotton candy. Yeah, and well, lemon. And lemon. Yeah, it yeah. does have a little lemon juice to it. Um, it's a mixture of tart fruit and sweet sugar. So cotton candy in the UK is called candy floss. In Australia, it's known as fairy floss. And of course here it's cotton, cotton candy. candy. Um, first created in 1897, get this, when a dentist named William Morrison joined forces with a confectioner by the name of John C. Wharton. Together, the duo created the machine that spun the heated sugar through a screen. Don't dentists not want you to have sugar? Oh wait, it gets better. Oh, okay. just, just wait, okay. it gets better. Um, Morrison and Wharton took seven years to share their product with the public. So in 1904, after they had uh, gotten their machine fine-tuned, debuted at the St. Louis World Fair. Uh, fair was meant to be the event of the century. Mm -hmm. It had its official opening April 30th, boasted many different attractions, including the Ferris wheel Ooh, cool. and a circus. Over 20 million people visited in, that's 1904. I mean, it's the World's Fair, yeah. World's Fair. Um, and many of the fair goers were intrigued by the sugary treat known as Fairy Floss. Cool. Um, they sold boxes of cotton candy for a quarter each. It was so popular, by the end of the fair, they had sold 68,000 boxes of candy, making just over $17,000. Any guess what that would be worth in today's economy? That's like in like the 10,000s, isn't it? 17,000s oh, in the 10,000s. Oh yeah, 10, yeah. Math are us here. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I, I can cheat, I couldn't do the math on this. It's over a half a million dollars in today's economy. Oh, wow. For their first time out with, Shik, with Cotton Candy. Um, they immediately filed for a patent of protection and then because of those laws, you know, no one else could recreate that machine. So that's how Cotton Candy was made for the next 25 years. Uh, however, in the 1920s, when the, uh, when the patent expired, a dentist named Joseph Lascaux broke into the cotton candy scene. Another dentist. Another dentist. So, I feel like they had a scheme here on how to get more people into the chair. Okay. Wait, they wanted them to get like well, their why bad would they, teeth? Well, why would they well, develop... Well, just being a bad dentist. Well, it, or a, a brilliant businessman. Happens all the time, right? Oh Look goodness. at cigarettes. Well... Yeah. Look at Grey Goose. <laughs> you know, why not cotton candy? I don't know. Oh, no. um, so he also is the, so uh, uh, Lascaux, <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it sounds good. Um, he didn't want to go with fairy floss, okay. so he went with cotton candy. And he did that because he grew up in Louisiana and it reminded him of the cotton in the cotton fields. Like, yeah, all in the fields. I thought maybe the fluff. Well, that, that was part of it. That was part of it. The seeds that, the, yeah. because it's all air and light and fluffy. So he thought it was um, more like cotton than fairy floss. Sure. Which I like cotton candy. Yeah. Fairy floss. I mean, I guess the floss makes sense that it was made by a dentist. But. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
Hadn't even gone there. Uh, let's mix some of this up. Yeah, all right. All right. Uh, you need a shaker full of ice. Woo! Maybe not full, but you know. Oh, and you didn't wash your hands. I didn't wash my hands. She's got to do it. Okay, that looks okay. good. And then you're going to put in one and a half full ounce of vodka. Now, it does say a good option is vanilla vodka. Ooh. Wasn't going to do that. That, that was... sounds good, though, but you don't like super sweet. No, that sounded overkill to me. Okay, so we got the one. One and a and half. Then and then you do five ounces of cranberry juice. Five of these? Five of those. Oh, you loosened that for me. I did loosen. I loosened all Whoa. of them for you. You want to, because this is the big thing and... I probably could have brought a measuring cup out. Right. This would have been a lot simpler. <laughs> Two. Ooh, this is going to fill that shaker. Three. Four. Five. Yeah, math all right. Math all right. <laughs> One teaspoon of lemon juice. Okay. Oh, dear. Here we go. Um, and you shake that up really well. And while Yay. you're doing that, I'm going to put a glob. Get the blue one. Get the blue one. All right, you can do blue. You think she'd eaten a bag of this already? Hey, <laughs> that looks like a little much. <laughs> Good, try it. Okay. Okay, and then you strain it over the fairy floss or cotton candy, and it says, "And watch the instant magic." Okay. Well, that is kind of fun the yeah, way it, it just sort fun. of it just disappears. Whoop! There it goes. Oh, I don't like the color of yours. So you're gonna have to mix another so we can do our samples too. Yes. Just toss that ice out that way. Okay. We'll have a we'll have a happy Fresh squirrel ice. later today. <laughs> You'll find that Ooh. sugary goodness. Ooh. Okay. Rinse, wash, repeat. Do you remember the rest? Yes. One and a half? Yeah. A lot of dead air time here, folks. <laughs> if I start something though, I always finish. I always get caught up and then I don't I don't remember where I left off. So we're gonna do this. Well we got this little stuffed animal over here. Oh yeah, you could talk to about to my left. This nice lovely pink dog. Poodle? She poodle, probably. Yeah, think? she's I a think... poodle. She's totally a poodle. She's got the right cut for it. Okay. Yeah. Did you look, did you count those? Four. That's four. Yay! <laughs> Help her over there. Thank you. <laughs> this dog right over here is from 1956 from the Freeborn County Fair. She was one, and I gotta see the name. Sharon Dale was who brought her in. That's a great name, Sharon, Sharon Dale. Dale. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is from the Freeborn County Fair here. Um, yeah, one in the Midway, which is really fun and in incredibly good shape. You know, mm -hmm. um, I never, none of my kids' fair Midway things lasted, <laughs> look, look like that. Yeah. I feel like they need more. I feel like those didn't have enough. Yeah. Kind of stuff it in there. Stuff it. It is really kind of fun. I wish those were clear glasses. The pink makes it much prettier than the than the blue. Yeah, but blue's better. All right, I'm gonna take those out to these guys. Oh, he's walking away. <laughs> Get you two. All right. All right, let's try. I'm a little nervous. Cheers. Cheers. Tastes like cranberry juice. It does. It tastes like cranberry, tastes like cranberry juice. It tastes like a cranberry vodka. Yeah. What if we put more cotton candy in it? Well, I'm sure you could put more cotton candy in it, but... That would get it sweeter. Yeah. It's good, though. It is good, isn't it? Especially on a hot day. I do like a cranberry vodka. I could do it without the berry floss. It didn't change it too much. No? It doesn't... Hmm. Um, I couldn't find anything on 1956, 
when this dog was one, but mm -hmm. the year after, on the first day, they had 8,000 people go through. Oh, yeah. So in 1957. Yep, 1957. 8,000 people went through on the first the day. County Fair. Hmm. Because they wanted to go to the Swenson Thrill Cave. Oh. And that was like a daredevil thing with cars and like suicide stunts and all that jazz. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And that first day, um, they had an issue with the lights, turning the lights on. So Kind of like this year's right. fair. Yeah, like sometimes there's an issue that, you know, the lights don't work or right. something breaks down. And so the fun zone was dark that first day. But oh, then before morning came, they had it all fixed. Oh, well, that's good. So, that's yeah, good. That was good. Oh. Yeah. And so. like with stuffed animals are commonly, you know, one at the fair a lot. Um, but that's not always the case. It wasn't always stuffed animals that you would win. Nope. So uh, they used to uh, win I chalk statues or straw hats. Sometimes cigars you could win playing games. Oh. Porcelain dolls. Pocket knives or like landscaped or religious pictures were really common. Oh, interesting. But in the 1930s, so like during the Great Depression, they were um, having food as... As prizes? As prizes. So like they would have a ham and bacon wheel or smoked oh. ham, cans of coffee that you could um, spend a nickel to play to try to like feed so, your family during I the got Great a question. Depression. Yeah. You suppose that was where the meat raffle idea came from? Oh, could be. I don't know. Interesting. But that, that would seem like a good progression. Yeah. So do you know when the first Midway happened? No. Yeah at the um, World's Columbian Exposition held in Chicago in 1893. Okay. It was held to celebrate the 400th anniversary of Christopher Columbus's arrival to the New World in 1492. Wow. Yeah. Um, the expo was influential in social and cultural event and had profound effect on, profound, <laughs> architecture, sanitation, the arts, America, American industrialism, and became the very foundation for traveling shows in America. Oh, wow. well, More sure. than 600 acres, 27 million people. Um, it was the first World's Fair with an area for amusements that was strictly separated from the exhibition halls. Um, and this was developed by a young music promoter named Saul Bloom, who concentrated on Midway Plaisance and introduced the term midway to describe the area of a carnival where fair rides, sideshows, games, and other carnival attractions were concentrated. That's cool. So 1893. Yeah, that's neat. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, I have another little tidbit about games and like winning things on games. Because like at carnivals, you get that bad rap of like they're swindling you out of winning something and yes. just like spending your money because it's rigged and you're not actually going to get anything. Um, like, that is where the term, like, mark or, like, sucker oh, came from. An easy mark. Yes. Like, dishonest carnival game workers sure. would um, yeah. find somebody that they could, like, swindle in to play the game that they had rigged. And then they would mark their hand with chalk, like in an X. And then they would, like, pat them on the back or the shoulder as they left. So oh. that the other people, other carnies, could see and go, ah, I, I can got get them. that one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I kind of feel like some days I've had an X on my shoulder. Oh no. <laughs> kind of an easy mark. So, the roots of the American fair, mm -hmm. like many words in our English language, the word fair traces back to Latin. Sure. Uh, most likely taken from the Latin feria, which means holy day. The earliest fairs were days marked for leisure and religious celebration. Uh, thought to have begun in the Roman Empire. We live in a little uh, these public holidays so consisted of games, competitions, and other festivities. Cool. <clears throat> As time passed, the fairs moved from that, from religion, to agriculture, competition, and education. Um, and in the U.S., oh, God, I got a fly bugging me here. Uh, they didn't catch on until the early 19th century. Uh, the earliest dated fair back in 1897 was organized by a man named Watson in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Oh, yeah. Um, you know when our first county fair was? It was in the 1800s. 1869. 1869. Okay. 
22nd and 23rd of September, a regular county fair was held. Second agricultural fair held since the war closed. Last year, 1868 was the first ever in this direction since the war closed is what the um, 1882 history says. So they had an agricultural show, uh -huh. which then evolved the following year into the county fair. fair. Yeah. And one year, like Floral Hall was in the courthouse. I remember that. Yeah, that That's was neat. cool. That was a yeah. neat, that was a really neat, um, We've got some really cool pictures from like 1906, the Midway mm -hmm. in 1906, which I don't think people could see no. if I held it up. I don't know. Can we post a picture when we post our? Yeah, I can post Maybe a picture we should post there. it. It's I can a put super it at the end fun. Of the video. That's the fairgrounds in oh, 1906. The tents. It's got I love the little tents. tents. It's got like one concession stand or building. It's got a racetrack. They did race horses. I think they still do, don't they? I don't think they race. They oh, show, they show horses. Them, but yes. they did race horses for yes. sure in the 1930s. I know they did that. And in, in 1906, the headline was 34 fine horses are entered and lively contests are assured. Cool. I like the way they wrote back I in know. the early 1900s. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awfully fun. Um, this was really kind of fun to dig into too. So going to the agricultural side from 1906 fair also. Blankets for all calves at the fair. Oh. Every contestant in the Boys and Girls Calf Club will receive a handsome olive drab khaki blanket for his or her calf. Olive drab khaki. Yeah, uh, right? Yeah. Handsome, handsome, handsome olive drab. The prettiest string of calves that were ever exhibited will be exhibited this year at the county fair. I like well, the tidbits. And I just got, uh, well, we just got a trophy in from 1922. Oh, that's from right. From the county fair. Fred Rubel won for the... Fred Rubel? Yes. I thought it was George Rubel. Nope, it was Fred, Fred Rubel. Rubel. Okay. Yep, from um, the Holstein, and it was like hyphenated to something. That started with an F. I don't know my cows. Sorry. Um, but he got like grand champion in that. It was from, a beautiful yes. trophy that looked like a cow had kicked it. Oh no, it has a dent in it. Yeah, it yeah. looks like a cow got it. But it was really cool from 1922. That was really that was a really neat little thing to get in during, especially this time of year, right at fair yeah. time. Yeah. So in 1906, the Empire Grocery is going to give away 109 quart aluminum preserve kettles. We're making What's that? jams and jellies oh, and pickles. 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 <laughs> We talked a lot about pickling during our podcast. What were we pickling? Fish? Well, yeah, fish that's the recipe one. I just got. My great grandma's recipe is pickled fish. And then we talked about like watermelon pickles. Oh, that's right. And crab apple pickles. Yeah. Oh, love it. Love it. Gotta love a crab apple pickle. Um, okay, so here's one more from 1906. Okay. Volumes have been written about the county fair, but to us, its chief attraction lies in the character of its crowds. The attendance is made up of families from every corner of the county and city. There the folks mingle in a neighborly manner. Friendly competition is in the air. We learn of the industry and production of our friend in the next township. A county fair should not be commercialized too strongly. It is a community effort and a community gathering. Our progressive citizenry in town and on the farm is making the most of the advantages offered. There's lots of room for improvement in both places, but if the county fair can get the milk of human kindness to flow a little faster, it has accomplished its purpose. The milk of human kindness. Isn't that great? That's another agricultural. Of the way it's like all worded. It's, it's fun. Like it's an agricultural fair, right? Oh, I don't know. I like it. It's kind of purpley. I like. I'm mine. not liking that. I like the. I like the cherry pink color. Mm -hmm. All right, what else you got? Is that the end of That's your fair it. speech? I got a whole stack I could read from oh my goodness. 1971. The horse barn outdoor arena was added to the fairgrounds. Wow. Um, they named the health building for Ruby Knee. Uh, there's a list of all the daily features, lots of livestock judging. Cool. Um, Historical Museum, open at the fair article. Yeah. Talks a little bit about the Big Oak Rural School behind us here. Um, yeah, there's so, we have so many fun things that we mm -hmm. could talk about related to fair that 
it might end up uh, having to be a pop-up exhibit. Yeah. Maybe before fair sometime. Right. Yeah, that'd be yeah. cool. Until then, happy cotton candy martini day. <laughs> <laughs>